Okay, good morning. So today I'm going to present okay, the histology of the central nervous system. Okay, so before I'm going further to discuss on the central nervous system, so I would like to introduce to you all what are the components of the central nervous system. So it is composed of brain and also the spinal cord. Okay. Uh, and microscopically, the central nervous system consists of two components, the gray matter and also the white matter. Okay, this, uh, the part of the central nervous system will further discussed by the, the other lectures later. Okay, but the most important thing that you have to remember here, the central nervous system, it consists of the brain and also the spinal cord. Okay. Okay, the gray matter. Okay, the gray matter is composed of the cell body of the neuron. These are the components of the gray matter. Okay, uh, just now that I have mentioned early of my early part of my presentation, macroscopically, uh, you can see that the central nervous system consists of gray matter and white matter. Okay, the gray matter is composed of these four components. Okay, it is consists of the cell body of the neuron. Okay, the cell body of the neuron, the dendrite of the neuron the unmyelinated part of the axon, okay, it should be unmyelinated uh, part of the axon that present in the gray matter, and also the neuroglial cells. Neuroglial cells is a supporting cell. So these are the component of the gray matter. We have the four components, okay. And why the gray matter is gray in color? The, it's gray in color is due to the absence of the myelin sheet. This is the reason why the gray matter is gray in color, because of the absence of this myelin sheet, okay? Uh, because here, if you see here, only the unmyelinated part of the accent that present here, okay, the gray matter. So you have to remember all the four components of the gray matter. And the background of the gray matter in between the cell body is known as a neuropil, okay? The space okay, that we have in the gray matter in between the cell body is known as a neuropil. So what are the structure that present in the neuropil. So these are the component of the structure that present in neuropil. It consists of the neuronal processes. Okay, neuronal processes. It can be an axon, can be a dendrite. And also the neuroglial processes. Okay, the neuroglial cells or supporting cell, it also have a processes. So the, the processes of neuroglial cells uh, is present in the neuropil. Okay, the neuropil just now that I have mentioned earlier is a space uh, present in the gray matter that located between the cell body of the neuron. Okay. Okay, so this is the picture just to show you the gray matter of the spinal cord. Okay, you can see here this is the uh, neuron cell body. So we have the neuropil. Okay, neuropil is a space uh, that located between the cell body of the uh, neuron. Okay, so we have the processes of the uh, neuron here, either dendrite or, uh, or axon. So we have the dendrite and axon that present in the neuropil. Not only that, we also have the processes of the neuroglial cell that also present in the neuropil. Okay, and then we also can find here, this is the neuroglial cell. Okay, the gray matter. Now we're going to discuss further, deep, uh, we're going to discuss deeply on the gray matter. The gray matter is located on the surface of the brain. It's known as cortex, okay? So gray matter located on the surface of the brain is known as a cortex. So I guess the example here, we have the cerebral cortex and also the cerebral cortex, okay? And then the mass of the gray matter that located deep in the brain within the white matter, so mean that the mass of gray matter that, that uh, embedded inside the white, white matter is known as a nuclei, okay? Gray matter that located deep uh, inside the brain and that it is embedded within the white matter and it is known as a nuclei. So example of the nuclei here, we have the basal ganglia, ganglia or basal nuclei. So this is the part of the uh, basal ganglia, okay? And then we, uh, uh, not only that, we also have the nuclei of the thalamus. So if you see here, uh, the green structure here, this is the, the thalamus. Actually, it is mass of the gray matter that embedded within the deeper part of the brain, uh, the, uh, within the white matter, okay? And 
we also have the deep cerebellar nuclei. Deep cerebral nuclei is a, actually is a gray matter that embedded within the deep part of the cerebellum, okay, that uh, surround by the white matter. Okay. okay, that is regarding the gray matter. Now we're going to proceed with the white matter. So white matter is composed of two components. Okay, the axon, okay, here, the axon is mostly myelinated axon, eh? the myelinated axon. That's why the white matter is white in color because of the presence of the myelin sheet that uh, surround the axon. But there are also some unmyelinated axon that present in the white matter, but just a small amount. But mostly it's a myelinated axon. That give, that, that, that's why the white matter is a white in color due, due to the presence of the myelin sheet. Okay. And this axon is traveled from one part of the nervous system to another. Okay. This is the most important uh, information that you have to remember. And this axon are grouped into a bundle, is known as a tract or fascicles. And not only axon that present in the white matter, we also have the neuroglial cell or supporting cell that also present in the white matter. The white matter contains less cell compared to the gray matter. Okay, the white matter contains less cells compared to the gray matter. And the cell within the white matter are only a neuroglial cells. Okay, we don't have a neuron in the white matter. We only have the uh, cell, uh, the cell that present in the neuroglial cell is a neuroglial, uh, the, uh, the cell that present in the white matter is a neuroglial cell, the supporting cells. Okay, so the white color of the white matter is due to the myelin sheet that surround the axon. That is the reason why the white matter is white in color because of the myelin sheet that surround the axon. The lipid in the myelin sheet give the ap white appearance to the white matter. Okay. Okay, you can see here, this is the picture just to show you the cerebral cortex. This is the, uh, the gray matter, the cerebral cortex and the white matter. Okay, uh, uh, a white matter that located deep to the cerebral cortex. The gray matter is located at the superficial, okay, cerebral cortex, the gray matter. The white matter is located deep to the cerebral cortex, okay. And the white matter contains the tract. Yeah? You can see here we have the different tract that is going to be discussed by the other lecture, okay. Okay, you can see here these are the different tract uh, that present in the white matter that we're going to discuss further by the, the, other, the other lectures. Uh. Okay, we have the different track. If you see here, we have the association track, commercial track, and also the projection track. Okay, no need to worry on that part. Okay, in the cerebrum, okay, now we could just focus on the cerebrum. In the cerebrum, the gray matter form the cerebral cortex. Okay, gray matter on the surface, uh, gray matter uh, form the cerebral cortex. Okay, gray matter is located on the surface of the cerebrum. And the cerebral cortex, it is folded into a many gyri and sulci. So it is not smooth. Lah. So it is folded structure. It forms the so fold, uh, folded structure in the cerebral cortex. And then the basal ganglia or the basal nuclei, it is a mass of the gray matter that's situated deep within the cerebrum. Okay. This mass of the gray matter is located deep in the, within the cerebrum. And this mass of the gray matter, uh, matter is surrounded by the white matter, okay? And deep to the cerebral cortex is the white matter. And the white matter is consists mostly of the myelinated axon and also the neuroglial cells. So you can see here, this is the picture just to show you the cerebral cortex. It is actually the gray matter part of the cerebrum. And then we have the white matter deep to the cerebral cortex, consists of the different, different track, okay? That I'm going to discuss further by the other lecture. Okay. The white matter, the white color due to the, the, white, the white appearance of the white matter due to the presence of the myelin sheets and that uh, surround the axon. And then we have the uh, gray matter that, that uh, the gray matter that uh, embedded into the, uh, embedded deep into the uh, brain or deep into the cerebrum, cerebrum. Okay, so you can see here, this is the example of the gray matter that embedded deep into the, uh, into the cerebrum, which is the basal ganglia. Okay, you can see this is the basal ganglia. Okay, so this uh, gray matter is uh, surrounded by the white matter. And then, if you see here, the, the gray matter, it is a fold, folding structure. Okay, it falls into a gyrus and also the sulcus. Okay. 
Okay, now we're going to the discuss on the histological part of the cerebral cortex. Okay, the cerebral cortex, it is divided into a several uh, layer. Okay, it is divided into six layers based on the most cell type that present there. Okay, so the, the, the name of the part of this layer actually is uh, reflect the most of the cell type that present the most prominent cell type present at, uh, on this in this layer. Okay. However, the border or the boundary between each layer is not clear. There are no clear cut boundary between each of the layer. These six layer are from the superficial layer to the deep layer. We have the molecular layer or plexiform layer. We have and then second layer is the external granular layer. Third layer is the external pyramidal layer. The fourth one, uh, the fourth layer is the internal granular layer. The fifth layer is the internal pyramidal layer, and the, the deepest layer or the layer number six is the multiform or fusiform layer. Okay, if you see from this picture, it's very hard to uh, find the boundary between each of the layer. There are no clear clear cut or clear clear boundary. Okay, between the layer. Okay, this is the layer that you can see here. Layer number one to layer number six, the deepest layer is layer number six and the, the superficial layer is the layer number one. Okay, the boundary here is based on the the most prominent cell type that presents in the each of the layer. Okay, now we're going to discuss on what are the characteristics of the each of the layer. Okay, what are the most cell type that present in each layer? Okay, the we, we uh, we start with the layer number one, the molecular layer. Okay, the molecular layer or plexiform layer. Okay, and the most, uh, the, the layer number one is the most superficial layer. It's, it is located just deep to the pyometer. Okay, so mean that it's located beneath the pyometer. So uh, the layer number one, it consists mostly the neuronal processes and less cell that present in the layer number, number one. You can see here, layer number one, it contains less cell, okay? And most of the structure that present here is a uh, neuronal processes. Okay, what are the cells that present here? Mostly cell that present here is a horizontal cell. So you can see here, this is the horizontal cell. The horizontal cell is horizontally oriented cell, okay? Not only that, we also have the dendrite and axon, that, uh, dendrite and axon of the neuron that present in the layer number one, and also the neuroglial cells, the supporting cell that present also in the layer number one. Okay, these are the component of the, uh, the structure that present in the molecular layer or layer number one, that C form layer. And then, then now we're going to proceed with the layer number two, the external granular layer. From the name, we know that most of the cell type here is a granule cell. Consists mostly the small granule cell or standard cell. So you can see here, this is the granule cells or standard cell. It is a satellite that sh satellite a shaped cell. Okay. Star shape. Okay. Star shape. Okay. Star shape uh, like cell. Okay. And uh, not only that, we also have the neuroglial cell that present in the layer number two. In for the layer number three, okay, now we're going to proceed with layer number three, the external pyramidal layer. So from the name, we know that the cell, most cell type that present here is a pyramidal cell, okay? Mostly the pyramidal cell that present in the layer number three. And not only pyramidal cell that present here, we also have the martinotial cell, okay? If you see here, this is the green color cell that, or the martinotial cell that also presents in the layer number three. So here we have the pyramidal cells. And we also have the neuroglial cell that present in the layer number three. And for the layer number four, the internal granular layer, okay, this is the layer number four. From the name, we know that the most cell type that present here is granule cells, standard cell. So this layer is thickest in the primary sensory area of the cerebral cortex. So definitely it is mostly consists of the standard cell, star shaped cells. You can see here the standard cell or granule cell. And also we have the neuroglial cell that presents in layer number four. And then uh, now we're going to proceed on the layer number five, the internal pyramidal layer. Okay, from the name, we know that the, the most cell type that present here is a pyramidal cell. Okay, 
this layer is thickest in the motor area of the cerebral cortex. This is the most important fact that you have to remember. Okay? It is thickest in the motor area of the cerebral cortex, the layer number five. But for the layer number four, it is thickest in the primary sensory area of the cerebral cortex. Okay? And yeah, just now I mentioned earlier that the cell, most cell type that present here is a pyramidal cell and also some neuroglial cells also present in the internal pyramidal layer. So you can see here in the layer number five, the pyramidal cell that present in the layer number five. Okay, and then the layer number six, the multiform or fusiform layer. Okay, this is the deepest layer of the cerebral cortex. Okay, you can see here, this is the uh, layer number six. Okay, the, fusi the fusiform layer. Okay, For, uh, from the name, we know that, uh, that most of the cell type here, the present here is a fusiform cell. Okay. So this layer is the deepest layer of the cerebral cortex and deep to the, this uh, layer, okay, beneath this layer, we have the white matter. Okay, you can see here, this is the fusiform cell, it's a uh, vertically oriented cell. Okay, so these are the layer of the cerebral cortex, okay, from number one to number four, okay. Okay, this picture just to show you the, how, what are the appearance of the pyramidal cell. You can see here, this is the pyramidal cell, it is a pyramid in shapes. Okay. okay, we also have the neuroglial, uh, neuroglial cell here. This is the pyramidal cells. Okay, in the neuropil, the space between the cell body of the neuron. Okay. Okay, this is the important fact that you have to remember. The layer number four, this is the layer number four, in the primary sensory cortex, the internal granular la layer or layer number four is thickest in the primary sensory area of the cerebral cortex. So you can see here, if you want, uh, compared to the other layer, layer number four is thickest in the primary sensory cortex, okay? And then the layer number five, this is the layer number five in the primary motor cortex, it is thickest in the motor area, okay? Layer number five is thickest in the primary motor cortex, okay? Okay, for conclusions, there are five cell types that present, there are five uh, neurons that present in the cerebral cortex. We have the pyramidal cell, we have the granular cells or standard cell, we have the horizontal cell, we have the martinotic cell, and also the fusiform cell. So you have to remember all the five cells, uh, all the five neurons that present in the cerebral cortex. Okay, now we're going to proceed to discuss on the cerebellum. Okay, in the cerebellum, the gray matter form the cerebellar cortex. Okay, the gray matter form the cerebral cortex. The gray matter also located on the surface of the cerebrum, similar like the cerebrum, cerebrum just now. The gray matter is located on the surface of the cerebrum, okay, and it forms the cerebral cortex. And we also have the deep cerebral nuclei, okay, deep cerebral nuclei, which, which is the mass of the gray matter that's situated deep within the cerebrum. And this uh, cere deep cerebral nuclei, it is surrounded by the white matter. And deep to the cerebral cortex is white matter. So you can see here, this is the cerebral cortex, the gray matter of the cerebellum. And deep to the cerebral, uh, cerebral cortex, we have the white matter. And uh, there are uh, deep cerebral nuclei that embedded deep within the cerebellum. Cerebral, okay? uh, and this deep cerebral nuclei it is surrounded by the white matter. So you can see here, this is deep, deep cerebral nuclei. It is surrounded by the white matter. Okay, you can see here, uh, this is the picture you should just, just to show you the cut section of the cerebellum. Okay, so you can see here the red color arrow here is indicate the, 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 the cerebral cortex. And here we have the white matter. Okay, this is the gray matter. And the cerebral cortex, Okay, for the cerebral cortex, okay, it is divided into three layers. Like the uh, cere cerebral cortex just now, cerebral cortex it is divided into six layers. But for the cerebral cortex, it is divided into three layers based on the most cell type that present here. Okay, from the superficial to deep, the first layer is a molecular layer. Second one is a Purkinje cell layer. And the third one is a granular layer. Okay. So you can see here, the most, uh, the, 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 the first layer or superficial layer is a molecular layer, okay? The second layer is a Purkinje cell layer. So Purkinje cell layer is a single cell layer. And we have the third layer, the deepest layer is a granu, granular, granular layer. And deep to the <coughs> granular layer, we have the white matter. Okay, now we're going to discuss on what are the components in each of the this layer. 
Okay, the molecular layer. The molecular layer is the outer layer. It contains large number of unmyelinated fiber, unmyelinated fiber, and few number of neurons. So you can see here, there are only a few number of neurons that are present here. And the type of the fiber that present here is unmyelinated fiber. Okay. The, in the molecular layer. Okay, there are two types of neurons that are present in this layer, the stellate cell. The stellate cell it lies in the outer part of the molecular layer, and the basket cell it lies in the inner part of the molecular layer. So you can see here, this is the stellate cell in the outer part of the uh, molecular layer, and then we have the uh, basket cell in the inner part of the molecular layer. So we only have two types of cells that are present in the molecular layer of the cerebral cortex. Now we're going to proceed with the second layer, the Purkinje cell layer. <coughs> the Purkinje cell layer, okay, uh, the Purkinje cell have a very large cell body. So then we have the Purkinje cell, okay, and the Purkinje cell layer. Uh, usually the Purkinje cell layer is only a single layer of cell, okay, and uh, because of due to, due to the the large cell body of the Purkinje cell here, so it's very obvious. And this large cell body is like a flask shape. So you can see here, it is a flask shape. Okay, flask shape of the Purkinje cell. And these cell are arranged in a single layer. Okay. And the, the third layer is uh, the granular layer. It is a deepest layer within the cerebral cortex. And there are two types of cells present here. Mostly, the cell present here is a granule cell. So you can see here, this is the uh, granule cell. This is the most cell type that present in the granular cell layer. And we also have the Golgi cell. So if you see from this picture, this is the Golgi cell that present in the uh, granular layer, cell layer. Okay. Okay. Uh, the granule cell, uh, the granule cell are densely packed in the granular layer. Okay. Just now we have discussed on the cerebrum. We have discussed on the cerebrum. Now we're going to proceed with the brainstem. Okay. For the brainstem, there are no clearly uh, it is not clearly separated into gray matter and also the white matter like the cerebrum and also the cerebrum just now. Okay, that is the special characteristic of the brain stem. They are not, it is not clearly separated into gray matter and also the white matter. The gray matter in the brain stem are the gray matter. Okay, here uh, I want to highlight here the gray matter, the gray matter in the brain stem are the nuclei, are the nuclei of the cranial nerve. And these nuclei are surrounded by the tract of white matter. Okay, the nuclei is surrounded by the tract of the white matter. It contains the cell body of the motor neuron. Uh, it contains the gray matter. It contains uh, gray matter in the brain stem. It contains the cell body of the motor neuron of the cranial nerve. Uh, the fun uh, actually is the functional counterpart of uh, the cell body is like a functional counterpart of the ventral horn of the spinal cord. <laughs> Like uh, similar, like functional, uh, functional counterpart of the ventral horn of the spinal cord. Okay, now we're going to discuss on each part of the uh, brain stem. We start to discuss on the pons first. So these are the several, several features that you can see on the pons. Okay, you have to remember the first one is superior cerebral peduncle, fourth ventricle, transverse pontine fiber, fiber of cortical spinal tract and cortical nuclear tract, and also the pontine nuclei. Okay, so you can see here, this is the real cut section of the uh, pons. So you can see here, this is the superior, su uh, the superior cerebellar peduncle, okay, SCP. And then we have the fourth ventricle. This is the thrombus pontine fiber. You can see here, this is drawing uh, part of the pons. And so this is the thrombus pontine fiber. And this is the cortical spinal tract and cort cortical nuclear tract. Okay, cortical spinal tract and cortical nuclear, nuclear tract. And then we have the fourth ventricle in the middle here. Yeah. That is the uh, the structure that you can, can see in the pons. Okay, the five component. Okay, now we're going to proceed uh, to discuss on the medulla oblongata. So medulla oblongata can be divided into two parts: the upper part or upper medullary level, the rostral part, and the lower part, and the caudal part. Okay, the lower medullary level. So the features that can be uh, can be can be easily identified under the microscope uh, at the upper medullary level are uh, so we have the fourth ventricle, we have the medial meniscus, we have the inferior orbitary nucleus. Usually for the inferior orbitary nucleus, it has a convoluted appearance, okay, convoluted appearance in transverse section, and also we have the pyramid uh, in the upper medullary level. 
Okay. So the pyramid contains the axon from the motor cortex and the travel to the spinal cord. So if you, uh, this is the cut section of the upper medullary medulla level of the medulla oblongata. So you can see here, this is the inferior olivary nucleus. So it is uh, in the, you can see the shape is here, here. It is convoluted in shape. And then we have the medial lemniscus. Okay, this is the, uh, what you call, uh, this is the drawing part. Okay, this is the medial lemniscus. And then we have the pyramid. Okay, and then we also have the fourth ventricle that present in the upper medullary levels of the uh, medulla oblongata. Okay, this part will be further discussed by the other lecture later. Okay, and then for the lower medullary, medullary level, so these are the features that can be identified. Okay, we have the fasciculus gracilis, uh, fasciculus gracilis, nucleus gracilis, nucleus gracilis. Okay. Uh, what is the fasciculus gracilis? What is the fasciculus gracilis? And what is the nucleus gracilis? What is nucleus gracilis? Actually, it is a axon and also the neuron that belong to the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. Okay, this is most important information that you have to remember. And then we also have the central canal. Okay, at the lower medullary level, central canal. A central canal is actually formed by the fourth ventricle that closes to become the central canal. Okay which continue down into the spinal cord. We also have the medial lemniscus at the lower medial level, inferior, inferior olivary nucleus, and also the pyramid. So you can see here, this is the nucleus conectus, nucleus gracilis, vesiculus gracilis, vesiculus conectus. So you can see here, this is the drawing more clear. You can see here, this is nucleus conectus, this is nucleus gracilis, this is the vesiculus gracilis, this is the vesiculus conectus. And we also have the inferior olivary nucleus, huh? the pyramids, and also the central canal. Okay, now we're going to proceed with the spinal cord. Okay, for the spinal cord, okay, this is a special about the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, the white matter is located at the periphery of the spinal cord. It's, it's located at the superficial part of the spinal cord. Okay, it's a con, uh, uh, opposite to the, the, the brain just now. Okay, the white matter is located at the periphery, at the superficial. Uh, for the brain just now, the gray matter is located at the periphery or at the superficial layer. Okay. The white matter contains bundle of the myelinated axon. Okay. That's why the color here is white in color because of the presence of the bundle of myelinated axon. So the bundle of axon is actually form, uh, uh, form the ascending sensory tract and descending motor tract. Okay. The gray matter... Okay, the gray matter, it lie in the center of the spinal cord. So you can see here, here the opposite, right, from the brain just now, right? Uh, the gray matter is located in the center. Okay, in the, in the, uh, in the middle, uh, in the center. Uh, it forms the edge or butterfly shape. Okay, so you can see here, the edge shape, right? This is the gray matter. This is the white matter. Okay. Uh, the volume of the gray matter is more in the cervical and lumbar region. Okay, this is the most important thing. Uh, the volume of the gray matter is more in the cervical and lumbar region due to the innervation to the upper limb and also the lower limb. The gray matter in the spinal cord are divided into four parts. Okay, into four parts, which is the dorsal horn, the ventral horn, or posterior horn, the same thing. Dorsal or posterior horn, ventral or anterior horn, lateral horn, and also the intermediate zone. Okay. So you can see here, this is the dorsal horn, lateral horn, ventral horn, then also the central canal. Okay, ventrally or anteriorly, uh, on the outer part of the spinal cord, you can see there is a deep ventral or uh, anterior median fissure lah, or ventral median fissure, same thing, lah. anterior median fissure, deep, very deep, eh? anterior median fissure or ventral median fissure, that located at the ventral part of the outer part of the spinal cord or anterior, uh, or anterior part lah, or ventral part of the sp uh, spinal cord. And dorsally, we have the shallow, shallow, right, shallow. Uh, posterior median sulcus. This is the anterior median fissure. This is the posterior median sulcus. The spinal cord is covered by the meninges. So you can see here we have the dura meta, we have the adductor meta, and also the pia meta. They cover the spinal cord. Okay. Now we're going to dis uh, discuss on what are the, the features of the dorsal horn. Okay. The dorsal horn or posterior horn. The dorsal horn. Uh, it consists of the neuron that receive information from the sensory neuron. Okay, so you can see here, this is the neuron that presents in the dorsal horn, the small sensory interneuron. 
okay, it consists of neuron that receive information from the sensory neuron. Then this the sensory neuron is actually located, the cell body is located in the, in the dorsal root ganglia. So you can see here, this is the small interneuron that present at the uh, dorsal horn of the uh, dorsal horn. Okay, the dorsal horn. And the, the small interneuron here, it receives uh, the sensory neuron where the cell body of the sensory neuron here uh, is located at the dorsal root ganglion. Okay, dorsal root ganglia. Okay, and then for the ventral horn, the anterior horn, it contains the cell body of the motor neuron. Okay, you can see here, it contains the cell body of the motor neuron. The cell body are large. It's very obvious compared to the small interneuron just now. The cell body of the, of the motor neuron at the ventral horn is very large. Okay, it's very easy to identify. And the axon of the motor neuron exit the spinal cord by passing through the white matter and enter into the ventral root of the spinal nerve. So you can see here, uh, this is the motor neuron. So the axon here, it enter into the, uh, it, uh, uh, it enter, it uh, in exit the spinal cord, it exit the spinal cord, and by, uh, by passing to the white matter. It bypass, passing, bypassing to the white matter here. And then it enter into the ventral root of the spinal nerve. Okay, ventral root of the spinal nerve. Okay, okay. So here, uh, this is the cut section of the spinal cord. So you can see here, this is the cell body of the motor neuron. It's very obvious, okay, very clear. So you can differentiate uh, which one is belong to the motor neuron and which one is belong to the other type of the cell, for example, the neuroglia. Hmm? So this is the gray matter. Okay, you can see here, this is the, we try to enlarge the size of the picture. So you can see here, this is the motor neuron that present in the ventral horn. Okay, when motor neuron, uh, motor neuron have large spiracle, okay, you can see here, uh, it has a large spiracle and pale standing nucleus. Okay, uh, and in this, in the center here, where it has a densely stent nucleus. Okay, so it's very, this is the special characteristic about the motor neuron. And the neuroglial cell also presents uh, in the uh, in the dorsal uh, in the ventral sorry, in the ventral horn. There are also a neuroglial cell, but uh, it's very easy to differentiate because the motor neuron here is very large. Neuro, uh, neuroglial cell is very small, and uh, the neuroglial cells it has small rounded shaped nuclei, and then the cytoplasm of the neuroglial cell also not very obvious, not evident. Okay. And then in between of the, this cell, we have the neuropil. Okay. And for the lateral horn, it contains the cell body of the preganglionic sympathetic neuron. Okay. If you see here from this picture, you can see here this is the, the large preganglionic sympathetic neuron that present in the lateral horn. And lateral horn only present at the thoracic and upper lumbar segment, uh, seg, uh, upper lumbar segment of the spinal cord from the Thoracic number, number one to the uh, to the uh, lumbar number two. Okay. Okay. Now uh, we're going to proceed with the next part of my lecture. Okay. The amount of this is the important fact that you have to remember. The amount of white matter, the amount of white matter, this is the white matter, this is the gray matter. The amount of white matter is largest in the spinal cervical spinal segment. So you can see here, this is the cervical spinal segment. The amount of white matter is the greatest one. And the smallest in the sacral spinal segment. So you can see here, the amount of the white matter is smallest in the sacral spinal segment, the amount of white matter. And lateral gray horn is present in the thoracic spinal segment. Okay, lateral, uh, lateral gray horn only present in the thoracic spinal segment. Okay, lateral gray horn. Okay, you can see here, this is natural gray horn. The anterior and posterior horn. Anterior and posterior horn are large in the cervical C4 to T1 and lumbar sacral enlargement of the spinal cord from the L1 to S3. Because of uh, here, uh, it actually invades the uh, upper and lower limb. Okay, for the intermediate zone, it contains the gray commissure and also the central canal. So this is the central canal. So the central canal is lined by the Epidermal cell. You can see here. This is the epidermal cell, and the central canal. It contains the cerebrospinal fluid. 
So this picture just to show you the uh, correct taxes. So you can see here the correct taxes is project from the wall of ventricle to the lumen of the ventricle. Okay, this is the cerebellum. Okay, now we're going to proceed to discuss on the correct taxes. Okay, just now I have mentioned that correct taxes is project from the wall of ventricle into the lumen of the ventricle of the brain. It composed of modified epidermal cell. Okay, modified epidermal cell. Uh, the modified epidermal cell it forms the simple carbide epithelium. Okay. So you can see here the shape of the cell is a cobidal shape, shape. Okay, it is a modified version of the epidermal cell compared to this one. This is the epidermal cell that line and ventricle. This is the uh, modified epidermal cell that uh, that form the cortex. So it is continuous with the epidermal cell that line the ventricle. So what is the difference between the modified epidermal cell of the cortex and also the epidermal cell that line the ventricle? This is the difference. It has the tight junction at the apical surface. Okay, it has the tight junction at the apical surface. And the second component that form the correct plexus is, is the pyometer. So for the pyometer, it forms the connective tissue core of the correct plexus. If you see here, this is the connective tissue core of the uh, connective tissue of the uh, pyometer. Okay, and then uh, here in the pyometer, it contain the abundance of the capillary. So you can see here. We have the capillary in the pyometer. So we can see here this is the correct axis of the fourth, uh, the third ventricle. This is the correct axis of the fourth ventricle. So we can see here this uh, this is the connective tissue core. And then we have the capillary here, and then we have the modified epidermal cell that form the correct axis. Okay, that's all. Thank you. I hope you enjoy uh, uh, on my uh, presentation. Thank you.